In this video, we're going over the best magic items that specifically have the ability to summon creatures, without too much worry about how they're able to summon those creatures, just as long as they're able to bring out another creature into the battle to help you in some way. And number 10, we have the Robe of Serpents. This is an item from Storm King's Thunder and is an uncommon rarity robe, which is stylized with brightly colored serpents. As a bonus action, you're able to transform one of those serpents into a giant poisonous snake, who instantly falls from the robe and slithers to an unoccupied space next to you, and acts on your initiative count. And you're able to control the giant poisonous snake with mental commands, which will disappear after one hour or when it drops to zero hit points. And the giant poisonous snake is one of the hardest hitting low CR creatures in the game, assuming the creature it's attacking isn't immune to poison damage, as it has a really nasty bite that's able to hit for more damage than most tier one players are able to put out in one turn. And one of the unique things about this item over a lot of other summoning items is that it allows you to bring out the creature with only a bonus action. And a lot of classes don't really use their bonus action in early levels. And since you're able to control the snake on your initiative count, you can kind of maneuver it to give yourself advantage if you're using the variant flanking rule. So in early levels, the robe is really good, which is why it has the downside that there is only a finite amount of summons available to the robe when you acquire the magic item as it has 1d4 plus 3 stylized serpents on it for an average of 5. So you might only get to use the robe 5 times before it no longer functions its magic item. However, one advantage to this item not having an unlimited amount of uses like almost every other item that will be on this list is that you can summon every single snake from the robe before combat in order to have 5 giant poisonous snakes at your beck and call, which can allow you to take down pretty much anything in tier level 1 to play, or levels of 1 to 5 assuming one of your enemies doesn't have an AoE spell to just wipe them all out first. As the damage of five giant poisonous snakes attacking at once is enough to down pretty much anything that's below CR5 in a turn or two. And at number nine, we have the Staff of the Python. This is an uncommon item which has the ability to transform itself into a giant constrictor snake under your control. All you have to do to summon it is just use your action in order to speak this command word and then throw it on the ground somewhere within 10 feet of you. And then the giant constrictor snake will roll its own initiative count and perform actions based on what commands you give it, just as long as you're within 60 feet of it. And a giant constrictor snake is pretty powerful in tier 1 levels of play, as the suggested level range for uncommon magic items is 1 to 4. So if you manage to get a staff of the python within the first two levels, the giant constrictor snake will have more health than everyone in your party combined. Once you hit levels 3 and 4, it's no longer overpowered, but at early, early levels, this thing is ridiculously strong. If you're in a game where a DM allows you to pick any uncommon item to start off with, the giant constrictor snake can probably just be an extra party member for the first four levels, and you get an unlimited amount of uses of it. Its damage isn't super impressive for a CR2 creature, but its constrict ability does allow you to grapple and restrain a target that it lands the ability on, which means everyone in your party will have advantage on that target that's being grappled by the snake. So that's probably the best way to use it, just use it to construct a priority target so everyone has advantage on them, or just have it bite things otherwise, if it's already constructing something as its bite does have a 10 foot range and the creature itself is huge, so it actually has a pretty big presence on the battlefield. The only downside to the staff is the fact that if the giant constructor snake dies, then the magic item itself breaks as well. So you have to be very careful about not allowing the snake to die which isn't a big problem in early levels because it also has one of the highest HP values of CR2 creatures. And you can just use a bonus action to convert it back into a staff, where it then regains all of its hit points immediately. Then you can just throw it back into the battle with your action. So if you want, you could just spend your whole turn healing this snake to full health. However, since you can only use your bonus action during your turn, you do have to preemptively decide when you want to turn it back into a staff to heal it to full because you can't do it if it's about to die outside of your turn. And at number eight, we have the Tan Bag of Tricks. The Bag of Tricks is a magic item where as an action, you can reach into the bag and throw out one of the balls to a location within 20 feet, where it then transforms into a random creature based on which Bag of Tricks you have and what roll you get on the 1d8. You can use the Bag of Tricks three times a day and the creature summon last all day or until they're reduced to zero hit points. So, what makes this particularly good is you can just use the bag of tricks three times at the start of your day, or right as you're about to enter a dungeon or something, in order to have three creatures ready to go. That you can just use your first bonus action to command them to attack your enemies. If you wish to control them more directly, you have to use your bonus action to give them more specific commands on their next turn, but you can't effectively micromanage the three of them only really one at a time. Now, there are some downsides to the bag of tricks, 
Each one of them has a chance to summon a CR0 creature, which doesn't really help much in battle. The Tan Bagatrix has a chance to summon a Jackal and a Baboon, which are definitely the least useful out of all the summons, where your better two summons are the Giant Hyena or the Tiger, which you summon on a 7 or 8. All the other summons are between CR 1 8 and CR 1 half, and are actually useful in Tier 1 levels of play, to the point where if you're lucky, with your three summons for the day, the Bag of Tricks is kind of overpowered for that extra damage and action economy it gives you, especially since you're able to use them every day, and they last longer than the Robo Serpents. So out of all the uncommon items that allow you to summon creatures, the Bag of Tricks is probably the best of the bunch, although it does have the possibility of giving you three CR0 creatures which won't be very useful for that day. So it's kind of like a gotcha magic item, where if you're really lucky you have a chance to be overpowered for the day, but if you're unlucky, then it's not super useful if you get three CR0 creatures. Which is why the Staff of Python is very competitive with the Bag of Tricks and the Uncommon Rarity, because at least the Staff of Python guarantees one CR2 creature every day. But the extra action economy and damage from having multiple creatures is just a little bit better most of the time. And at number seven, we have the Marble Elephant figurine of Wondrous Power. Now there's actually a lot of different animal figurine items in the game, each one with different forms of rarity, and out of all of them, the elephant is probably the most useful one in just straight up battle, as all the others are basically just utility, so they won't be on this list because there's a lot of really good magic items that summon creatures, where we don't really need to look at the utility of some of the other niche ones. And what the marble elephant does is allow you to throw the figurine within 60 feet of you in Spigen's command word, where it then transforms into a CR4 elephant for 24 hours. The creature is friendly to you and can help you out in battle and lasts for its full duration or until it reaches zero hit points, in which case you can't use it again for another seven days. So once every seven days you get a CR4 elephant for a full day, and the elephant is able to dish out around 41 damage on average if it successfully lands its trampling charge, which is pretty good damage for the CR4 rating. Rare items are for adventurers around levels 5 to 11. So in the earlier levels of 5 to 11, the elephant is like having an additional party member for the day, similar to the Stab of the Python. It has a pretty beefy health pull too at around 75 on average, so it will definitely help contribute. But one of the biggest downsides to the elephant is just that really long cooldown. All of the figurines have really long cooldowns, so you really have to be careful when you actually use the item. As you can't use it every day or whenever you like, like the Staff of Python or the Bag of Tricks. So even though the elephant it summons is really nice, it's not really as good as some of the other better rare quality items that can summon creatures. And at number six, we have the Brazier of Commanding Fire Elemental. This is a rare item which simply allows you to cast the Conjure Elemental spell once per day. Although, you're only able to summon a Fire Elemental with that spell, rather than picking any of the four. There is a magic item for the other three elementals as well, and all four elementals are pretty good. None of them are bad, and the only reason I picked the Fire Elemental over the other three is because it's able to deal the most amount of AoE damage. You see, the Fire Elemental has the Fire Form trait, where it deals damage to creatures that it moves through and sets them on fire where they take fire damage at the start of each of their turns unless they spend a full action putting themselves out. And the Fire Elemental has 50 feet of movement, so if you just have it take the Dodge action, so no creatures it passes through gets an opportunity attack on it, you can just have it move through a whole bunch of enemies in order to set them all on fire and have it dish out way more damage than what any of the other elementals are able to dish out in one turn. Although, just remember, even though the elemental can move through creatures, they are counted as difficult terrain, but with 50 feet of movement speed, it should be able to move through quite a bit of creatures before it runs out of speed anyway. And also, if you're facing off against an enemy which has resistance to weapon attack damage, the fire elemental's attacks are just pure fire damage, so they're able to bypass a lot of resistances from high level creatures. There is the downside where a lot of creatures in the monster manual have resistance or immunity to fire damage, so there are probably some campaigns in which the fire elemental is completely useless. However, taking fire resistances and immunities out of the equation, the fire elemental is very strong in situations where no one is immune or resistant to its damage, which is a situation which puts it on this list over the other three, even though all the other elementals are also good. Now, the fire elemental lasts for only one hour, and if you lose concentration on the spell before the hour is up, then the Fire Elemental will turn on you and your party. So, there are downsides to it, but at least you get to use it more than once every seven days. And it's one CR rating higher than the Elephant, which is why it's a little bit higher on this list. And at number five, we have the Brass Horn of Valhalla. 
The Horn of Valhalla is one of those items which has different rarities and different effects based on those rarities. So for this video we choose the Brass Horn, because it's probably the most useful rarity in order to use this item. Because what it does is allow you to summon a number of Berserkers based on the rarity of the item. So for the Brass, you can summon around 11 on average. The Berserker is a CR2 creature, which is able to deal around 9 damage on average, so having 11 Berserkers means an extra 99 damage per round. Which is definitely more damage per round than what the Fire Elemental is able to put out, and definitely more than the Elephant. Although there are a couple of downsides to the Horn. The Horn can only be used once every 7 days, just like the Elephant figurine, and the Berserkers only last for 1 hour. Plus, in order to use the Brass Horn, you need to be proficient in all simple weapons. However, most classes are proficient in all simple weapons. The only ones that are not proficient with all the simple weapons baseline are Sorcerers, Druids, and Wizards, but everyone else is free to use the Horn without problem. And since it doesn't require attunement, there's a good chance someone will be able to blow it. Now, the reason we choose the Brass for this video is because of the level range of magic items and the usefulness of having CR2 Berserkers. The lowest possible rarity of the item is also rare with the Silver Horn, where it summons four less Berserkers on average but has no requirements to use the Horn, so all classes can use it, or even a commoner. So for an average adventuring group, the Brass is the lowest rarity one that you'd be able to use easily, which has the best benefits. Once you get up to the Bronze Horn, which is the very rare quality item, it only summons three more Berserkers on average, and they are still CR2 creatures. The very rare category of items is for creatures in level ranges of 11 to 16, and a lot of high level creatures in that range will be resistant or immune to normal weapons, or have a high AC so the Berserkers will miss most of their attacks. Then if you get to the legendary quality, which is 17th level or above, the 18 Berserkers that the Iron Horn can summon are almost useless, unless there's a whole bunch of mob enemies you can set them on. So in tier 2, for levels of 5 to 10, being able to get 11 Berserkers is actually a huge benefit to your party, and can basically allow you to win any encounter that you use the horn on in that level range. Even better if you're able to get the horn earlier than level 10. However, it is possible for a DM to just give you the legendary horn when you're level 1, which is obviously better if you're able to use that one at that level. It's just, if you go by the level ranges of the rarity of the item, Based on what the effect is able to use, the Brass Horn is definitely in the threshold of the most useful for its level range. And at number 4, we have the Gold Canary Figurine of Wondrous Power. This is a legendary item from Fizzbang's Treasury of Dragons, and kind of functions like the Elephant Figurine, although it has the ability to transform into one of two forms, instead of only ever having one thing it can turn into. The first form it can turn into is the form of a Giant Canary. The Giant Canary is a CR 1 half creature, which is large and has a flying speed, so you can use it as a mount. And essentially gives the player flying, which is very valuable to get from any kind of magic item. The canary lasts for 8 hours when it's summoned and can be used once a day. So you basically just have a permanent canary flying mount, which is really good on its own. As flying is very valuable in D&D, as most things are not balanced around being able to fly, and a vast majority of the monster manual cannot hit a flying target. Although by the time you obtain a legendary item, flight is no longer as rare or hard to get, but still always good to have anyway. And unlike the elephant figurine, or a lot of the other figurines, this one doesn't have an unreasonably long cooldown time, as you can use the form every day instead of once every two days or once every seven days. Its other form though definitely fits in with the very long cooldowns of the other figurines, where instead of a giant canary, you can choose to transform it into an adult gold dragon. Although, with some caveats, you can only do this if you're missing half or more of your hit points, the dragon can't use any of its legendary actions or layer actions, it only lasts for one hour instead of eight hours, and after you turn it into an adult gold dragon and it turns back, it can't be used again until one year has passed. Now, an adult gold dragon is a CR 17 creature, so it's very valuable to have as a party member for any tier of play, especially tier 4 in which legendary items are kind of balanced for. So being able to add an adult gold dragon to your party for one hour is kind of like the Horn of Valhalla where it becomes a mega cooldown that can possibly win you the encounter. Although unlike the Horn of Valhalla which becomes useless while it's on cooldown with its big cooldown, at least the canary figurine is useful outside of the gold dragon as just a quasi permanent flying mount. And just a note for this list, there aren't really any good very rare items which can summon creatures, which is why I've skipped directly from rare quality items to legendary. 
And at number 3 we have the Iron Flask. This is a legendary item which doesn't require two mint that allows you to trap creatures inside of it if they fail a DC 17 wisdom saving throw and then release the creature in order to control them for one hour where it obeys all of your commands unless that command is likely to result in its death but does allow you to command the creature to help you fight in a battle. Now there are some restrictions to the creature you're trying to capture where you can only use it on the creatures that are not native to the plane of existence that you're currently in. So both elementals, demons, and devils you come across will be from different planes of existence and are fair game in order to try to capture the Iron Flask. And the Iron Flask does not have a limit on how many times you can use it per day. So if you're very efficient with your capturing in just a constant battlefield of creatures from different planes of existence, you could have a new creature helping you every hour and then just defeat the creature at the end of the hour when the charm breaks by just ganging up on it. Or you can just try to trap it again but if the creature was already trapped in it previously, they have advantage on the saving throw to be captured again, which doesn't matter very much since you have an unlimited amount of tries, and you can even just command the creature to fail the saving throw in order to capture it before the hour is up. Although that one might raise some eyebrows with DMs, so best to ask them first before you try to go that route. Now, what's great about the Iron Flask for a DM is it's a great excuse to have a bad guy have a very unique type of monster as one of its companions in a battle. As when a party first encounters a flask, there's rules of the DMG to determine which random creature might be inside the flask already, which you can use as the DM to determine which creature you might want to add to one of your encounters, and then just use the fact that the bad guy has the iron flask as a justification for why there's some random solar in the middle of a bandit's hideout helping them out. And at number two, we have the Scroll of Terrasse Summoning. This is an item from the Rime of the Frostmaiden module and is incredibly simple in its usage as it allows you to read the scroll in order to summon a terrasse to a location you can see within one mile of you. After you use the scroll once, you can't use it again, and you have no control over the terrasse, and it's just hostile towards all creatures other than itself. A terrasse is a CR 30 creature, so no matter who you summon the terrasse on, it's going to attack them and probably deal a significant amount of damage to them before it stopped. So if you want, you could just summon a terrasse right in front of a villain's lair, and the terrasse will just go inside and kill everyone for you, as it will immediately try to attack whatever is nearby. Although, if the terrasque is too successful in wiping out everything without taking enough damage, then the party might have to fight it themselves in order to put it down, as it doesn't disappear until it drops to zero hit points. Even though you can only use the item a single time, the terrasque is strong enough to defeat pretty much any big bad evil guy in your campaign, and can be just kind of a game ender to the point where trying to obtain the scroll of terrasse summoning could be the whole point of an adventure. And it's kind of one of the alternative ways to win the module it's from. It's also a great item to give to a villain if you want them to just summon a terrasque in the middle of a city that you want the party members to try to stop, as it's the perfect way to allow you to throw a terrasque into any campaign without giving the power to your players as the scroll is a single-use item. And at number one, we have the Wand of Orcus. This is an artifact quality item, so the highest quality item in the game, and there are actually a couple of other artifacts that are able to summon creatures, but I chose the Wand of Orcus because it's able to summon its creatures a lot easier and without any random chance. As in addition to a whole bunch of other spells and special abilities, one of the special abilities it has is called Call Undead, where as an action you can call as many skeletons or zombies as you want, just as long as their health divides by 500 hit points which is either 22 zombies, 38 skeletons, or a combination of the two. And since the skeletons have a ranged attack, that's probably the better one if you just want to bombard your opponent with a whole bunch of arrows. Although the zombies are tankier and can take a lot more damage if you just need meat shields, as in tier 4 levels of play, or 17 level and above, having a whole bunch of skeletons isn't going to do very much damage to creatures with very high AC or resistance to their non-magic weapons. Although having the action economy of 38 skeletons is still good against pretty much anything, unless the target they're fighting is just straight up immune to their damage. And thankfully there aren't a lot of high CR creatures that are immune to non-magical weapon damage. Most of them are simply resistant. And seeing as the ability of the Horn of Valhalla is just to summon a whole bunch of creatures, being able to do this once a day with the Wand of Orcus is similarly pretty good. Which is why the Wand of Orcus is the number one spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. If you think there's any other better items that should be in this video, or have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.